Department says Lender King to visit the Middle East to back Yemen truce. <music> Yemeni women face threat of electronic blackmailing and cyber crime. Healthy minds continue to claim civilian lives across the country. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News with me, Roshan Fouad. The final statement of the Arab summit in Nigeria affirmed support to the political solution in Yemen. The statement skipped to address the Yemen's request to designate the Houthis as a terrorist group. This report has more details. The Arab summit held in the Algerian capital, with two-thirds of the Arab leaders attending, faces many divisive Arab issues that may foretell its conclusion. The summit is held under the slogan of Free Union and is scheduled for two days. Yemen is a hot point that needs a decisive Arab stance due to a continued suffering for civilians for more than seven years and blatant Iranian interference and influence that threaten the Arab unity and interests. As to Palestine, the summit is expected to give rhetoric support to the Palestinian cause. Embracing Syria again in the Arab line is another issue that needs unity from the Arab states. The Egyptian water dispute with Ethiopia is another challenge that is facing the Arab summit. In as much as Cairo's Nile water concerns are of existential nature, disagreements in Libya, both politically and militarily, will pose a huge block in front of Arab leaders. There is also the Algerian Morocco rift in light of the Western Sahara dispute. Still, outside challenges are the real threat, especially the Turkish and the Iranian interference and the war in Ukraine. As to Turkey, the Arab League in September issued a communique criticizing Ankara for its interference in the Arab state's internal affairs, specifically its military presence in Iraq, Syria and Libya. The Arab League also condemned Iran's destabilizing behavior in the Middle East, including its terrorist proxy militias in Iraq, Lebanon, Syria and Yemen. The food security in many Arab countries is challenged by shortage of imports because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Notably, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Libya and Tunisia rely heavily on Black Sea grain imported from Russia and Ukraine. They buy more than 60% of their wheat from the two countries. In close relation to this global crisis, oil is a hectic issue after OPEC Plus decision to cut production by 2 million barrels per day. The Arab leaders would support Saudi Arabia for this recent decision. U.S. Special Envoy for Yemen, Tim Lander King, to visit the region this week to back Yemen's truce. The U.S. State Department announced that Special Envoy Tim Lander King get to visit UAE and Saudi Arabia in order to boost up efforts to renew Yemen's truce. The State Department spokesperson added that Houthi's actions are being monitored and urged them to cooperate with the UN envoy to achieve peace in the country. Prime Minister held a meeting with the European Union delegation to discuss the latest developments on the national scene. This came in light of the recent military escalation of the Houthi militia by targeting international navigation routes. On their part, the European head of missions expressed their rejection to the healthy escalation and stressed the need to renew the humanitarian truce. The United Nations announced healthy mines killed 343 civilians during the past five years. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said that land mines and unexploded ordnance continue to inflict heavy losses on civilians in Yemen and are responsible for 343 civilian casualties during the past five months, including 95 deaths and 248 injuries between April and September 2022. A recent human rights report said that Yemen has topped the list of Arab countries with the largest number of journalists killed during the last decade. 
Yemen ranked third in the Arab world with a rate of about 5% with 42 journalists killed since 2014. Yemeni women continue to be victims of electronic blackmailing and cybercrime. A recent incident was recorded in Thais yesterday when a female activist called Stars Elwen attempted to commit suicide due to electronic blackmailing. The following report gives more details. While the ongoing conflict in Yemen is constantly reported on in the news, accounts of the horrible atrocities committed against women, especially those in the virtual world, have tragically gone unnoticed. Female activists in the digital sphere have been on the receiving end of an onslaught of verbal harassment, defamation, and violence. One such case is that of Sara Alwan. On Wednesday evening, the Yemeni activist committed suicide in the city of Saiz after eight long months of electronic blackmail. A local source said that she attempted to end her life by shooting herself with a pistol and was subsequently taken to a hospital in the city. According to medical sources, Sarah is still alive and is currently in the operating room and under close observation. According to the local source, Sarah accuses a person named Amjad Wathak al Maktari and his relative Emel of pilfering a flash drive containing a private set of photos and using them to blackmail her. Sara, according to human rights workers, is a humanitarian activist noted for her charity initiatives and ties. The extortionists are reportedly Sara's neighbors who occupy the same building as her. Their accounts and phone numbers have been leaked, revealing their identities. The case has been in the Criminal Investigation Department for several months now, and Taz's security services have stalled without making any significant progress in her case. Sarah reportedly shot herself in the Taj Shamsan Hotel. The police of Taiz governorate announced late Wednesday evening that they had arrested the suspect in the case. They pointed out that Sarah's father asked the police to stop the procedures on August 29th after the police identified the culprit. In her last Facebook post, which doubled as a suicide note, Alwan declared that her decision to end her life came after she had exhausted all options for dealing with the blackmailers and that she was unable to go on living in a nation that shields oppressors. She ended her message by pleading with the public to avenge her and restore her rights from Amjad and Emel, her extortionists. Sarah was a victim of not just internet extortion, but also of the security instability and the state of ties under the militia's reign. The joint forces launched strikes on targets of the terrorist Houthi militia south of Hodeida. The military media reported that the joint forces targeted Houthi reinforcements south of Tohaita and quickly dealt with them. In Thais, several fronts witnessed the intermittent confrontations between government forces and the Iran-backed Houthi militia. A Houthi mine exploded and killed a young man and a child in Hodeida yesterday. According to local sources, the two children from El Durahimi were killed by a Houthi mine while they were collecting firewood in their area. Houthi mines continue to claim lives of civilians across the country. According to the United Nations, most of the casualties among civilians are attributed to landmines explosions. This report gives more details. Two separate landmines explosions killed four civilians in Yemen. Three people, including two children, were killed in Hodeida's southern district of Durahimi by an explosion caused by a landmine that the Houthis had earlier planted. The victims were riding their motorcycle and heading to their residential area in Hodeida when they were hit by the explosion. In the northeastern Old Rich province of Marib, another landmine explosion killed one person and injured two others. Last month, the Yemeni Landmine Observatory Center, an independent organization tasked with documenting and monitoring casualties of landmines, said that 81 people were killed and 192 others wounded in blast caused by mines and explosive devices during the United Nations Procure truce that began in April and expired in early October without being extended. According to pro-government demining experts in Yemen, more than one million landmines have been laid since the outbreak of the civil war in late 2014. In the past six years, the Yemeni Coalitions for Monitoring Human Rights Violations has documented the deaths of more than 1,929 civilians as well as the destruction and the damage of more than 2,872 public and private facilities across the country. During the first phase of the United Nations Mine Action Services Project, land survey and clearance operations were conducted in 21 governed rates and 232 districts and over 23 million square meters of land were cleared. 
The second phase began in October 2021 and expected to run until the end of December 2026. King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center Project Masam for clearing in Yemen dismantled during the fourth week of October 2022 a total of 958 mines planted by the Houthi militia across Yemen, including eight anti-personal mines, 284 anti-tank mines, 662 unexploded ordnance, and four explosive devices. Since the beginning of the project, as many as 370,117 mines have been dismantled. Yemen has hindered in a civil war since late 2014, when the Iran-packed Houthi militia seized control of several northern provinces and forced the internationally recognized government out of the capital, Sana'a. The Saudi-led coalition interfered in the conflict in March 2015 to support the Yemeni government and restore state institution from the Houthis' grab. Coming next. UNESCO and Saudi Arabia renovate historic palace in Hadramaut. Tahama Fiha Khair Kabir Bindan. البيطري صمم عمان للتغوى الحيوانية بشكل عام نجينا أرجع البقرة على طول الحمد لله الآن لو في بقرة مريضة أنا أعرف إيش فيه يهدف المشروع إلى تحسين سبل العيش مربيات الثروة الحيوانية قمنا بعملية تدريب المربيات الهدف هو كيف ننتج حليب نظيف. طبعا هناك حماس صراحه من المزارعين وجمعيه كشوبع. نسبه الزياده في الانتاج قد تكون 99%. Welcome back. The UNESCO and Saudi Arabia announced that they have offered a grant to renovate the historic palace of Sayyun and Hadramaut. This report gives more details. The Saudi Development and Reconstruction Program for Yemen has provided funding to renovate the historic Sayyun Palace in Hadramaut Governorate in response to the Yemeni government's request to protect antiquities and endangered historical sites. Some officials said that the renovation of the historic Sayyun Palace was part of 224 projects and development initiatives in various Yemeni governorates to help the people in seven main sectors, which are education, health, water, energy, transport, agriculture, and fishery, building the capacity of government institutions and other development projects. The head of UNESCO's regional office in the Gulf states said that this project came to preserve the diverse Yemeni cultural heritage and preserve the country's identity that forms the basis for social cohesion, recovery and the building of peaceful societies. The director noted that the palace needed urgent intervention as part of its wall has collapsed, adding that the war in Yemen and seasonal rains over the past years have caused the total collapse of separate parts of the outer wall and floors leading to significant damage to the palace infrastructure. They added that the project was not only aimed at renovating the palace, but also at reviving its role as a museum and a civilized center for local cultural life, providing job opportunities for Yemeni youth and enhancing the role of culture in building local capacities in Yemen. Sayyoun Palace is known as Sultan Jafar al-Kathiri Palace. And historians mentioned that the construction of Sayyun Palace took 15 years due to the particularity required to build the palace from mud and the inflorescence which also needs a long period of exposure to the sun to dry. That's why this place enjoys uniqueness and rare beauty that dates back to one of the oldest civilizations in the world. An international movie about hunting in Yemen was screened by the Egyptian actor Amr Waqid. The film revolves around a guy named Farid in the fish sector who travels to Yemen to prove his point of view. The protagonist embarked on an expected adventure with Sheikh Mohammed in Yemen. Lütfen, sizi bu büyük teşebbüsümüzle uygun bir şekilde tanıştıramadım. 
Six fishermen from Thai's governorate died when their boat sank in the Red Sea. Local sources said that six fishermen drowned when their boat sank near an Eritrean island. The sources indicated that fishermen from Hodeida governorate found two others who survived the accident and found them clinging to the hull of the boat. The government urged security forces to take utmost alert to protect ports from Houthi attacks. This came after the recent Houthi attack on Ndabba port in Hadramaut. This report gives more details. According to a government source, Yemen's government has begun to increase precautionary security measures around important industrial sites in various southern provinces, as the Houthi militia has vowed to launch fresh attacks. Following the government's warning, local security officials deployed elite military units of the Southern Transitional Council in and around major cities, including Aden, as part of security preparations to counter Houthi threats. Because of the stable environment provided by local authorities, the country's southern provinces and western coastal districts are experiencing stability and prosperity, since numerous critical commercial facilities and major investment firms are located there. According to the source, activities in the seaports and oil fields have fully resumed, helping to safeguard the country's economy from further degradation amid the ongoing civil conflict. Despite being the focus of Houthi missile threats, the southern regions continue to attract businesses and investors from the north, according to the official. Since the failure to extend a UN-mediated humanitarian ceasefire between Yemeni government troops and the Houthis earlier this month, violence has escalated across the war-torn Arab country. The national ceasefire went into effect on April 2nd and was extended twice until October 2nd. However, earlier this month, the UN Special Envoy for Yemen, Hans Grunberg, stated that no arrangement has been made to prolong the failed truce between Yemen's warring sides. Failure to prolong the UN broker truce caused the Houthi militia to issue a warning to all international oil corporations situated in government-controlled areas to halt operations immediately or risk missile strikes. Another official of Yemen's government said that as a response to the Houthi threats, elite troops reinforced their fortifications in and around the country's strategic ports, including the port of Mukalla. Yemen has been at war since late 2014 when the Iran-backed Houthi militia overran major northern cities and drove the government out of the capital, Sana'a. Tens of thousands of people have been killed, 4 million have been displaced, and the country is currently on the verge of famine. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. State Department says Lender King to visit the Middle East to back Yemen truce. Yemeni women face threat of electronic blackmailing and cybercrime. Healthy minds continue to claim civilians' lives across the country. This is the end of the news. It was Roshan Foet. See you soon.